How are we doing guys? We're doing a bit of a um, workshop project today because the weather it's minging it's horrible and you know I know you can go out with a camera uh, when it's when it's raining and get some cracking shots and that but the light's rubbish and so it's not a photography day so what we're going to do today we're going to make a simple thing we're going to make a walking stick we're going to make a thumb stick now in one of my last videos um, it was a, a video about going and scouting out places and and I find a, a thumbstick dead useful. I take them out all the time with me. Uh, you know, if you're scratching about, you're up in the hills and that, you know, you're coming down inclines and that. And they're just handy. They're just, um, you know, they're a cracking support. They can save your knees and that. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to show you a few different designs and we, we'll paint one up and make a fancy one. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. Workshop day today and we're going to make a thumbstick. Just think. Okay, right, so what we're going to make with stick out of? Well, I make nearly all mine out of hazel. Now, when you're out and about, scratching about, you'll see um, the hazel coppices and uh, the, it's just a fantastic wood to use. You know, it's readily available. There's plenty of it about. You know, it, uh, it comes in some fantastic colours. You know, you get silver ones and dark ones, all different, you know, colours. So that's what, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a nice stick about I don't know four and a half foot long something like that probably about an inch in diameter at one end and then obviously it's going to taper down and uh, once we get them caught it don't matter if they're bent if they're slightly bent we can straighten them out we're going to show you how to straighten them and if you're lucky you might find one of them that's just a natural thumb stick so they're the easiest ones to you know to make because you don't have to do it to them all it's a case of doing is just smoothing them off uh, cutting them to length you know get some oil on it and put a tip on it and jobs are good and, but they're hard to find these they are really difficult to find you know to, that's not a perfect one because it's a little bit um, one side's thicker than the other but it's all right it's a good good little stick that um, we've got what else have we got that's another one that's a that's a bit more even a little bit close though that so if you've got a big fat thumb like I have it gets stuck a bit that so it's for someone with smaller hands that but um, yeah what I tend to do I tend to make my thumb sticks up so let's have a look right so we've got a box full of these there so these are ones that I've, I've cut while I've been out I mean look at that massive big chunker that's a whopper in it. Now you might think we're not be able to do it with that, but after a bit of um, bit of fining down, so we take the bark off, then we just start, you know, bringing it down to shape, and then we end up with. There we go. There you go. That's what we that's what we end up with. So we go from from that to that. All right. We've all different ones here. You know, we've got one there that's still drying. That they take a bit to dry out these. But uh, yeah, that's what we end up with. So on this particular one, I put a spacer in there. That's a bit of cow in that. Um, the tops, the, that's black buffalo. This one, I've actually spigoted it through there. You can see the um, that's the actual shank of the stick coming through the top there. And we put a piece of black buffalo, a bit of decorative. And then what we can do, we can paint that up. Uh, we have a couple of examples here. So... That's one. There you go. I painted a, a nice raw book on there. A little hoof print on the back. That's that's a bit of oak burr on the top. So we've got oak burr tips, and we've got a nice piece of oak burr spacer. So that's all varnished up. That one's ready to go. What else have we got? This is one I just did yesterday, actually. So that's a that's a German short-haired pointer, and we've got a. A Gaia falcon on the back there, so that's uh, that's for a, a falconry falconry chap. That so that's uh, enjoyed doing that one, and we've other you know we've other different ones. What's that one? Again, similar thing. Nice little uh, peregrine falcon on there with a feather on the back. So yeah, the options are endless. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna put one together. We'll show you how to to put it together. You don't have to paint it. Um, you know you can just oil it and varnish it um, 
that's another one, another little s smaller one. That's got a bit of a twist on it, that, but it don't matter, does it? You know, it's quite, a, it's a nice size in the hand, that. A little bit smaller one, so for someone with smaller hands, that's got cow horn on the tips there. And a bit of oak, oak bow. I mean, we can use use whatever we want. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can find when you're, you're out rooting about. You know, pieces of, uh, of burr off fallen trees that you can cut off. So, let's show you how to... What we're going to do first, we're going to show you how to straighten the stick because invariably when you get a stick, like I've got some up here, let's have a look. So, that's not too bad that one but you can see when I turn it around it's got a, it's got a twist in it there. So what we, uh, what we do with this, we apply some heat, there's a couple of different ways of... Uh, sorting this out we can either apply it directly with a hot air gun okay or the preferred method that I use is uh, to steam them so I have a steamer set up it's just it's nothing fancy it's just um, a steel tube with um, it's actually a, a steam cleaner and the hose goes in the bottom creates steam in the tube we just block the end up with a towel I'll probably put maybe five sticks in at a time Give it about 15-20 minutes, okay, um, and then get them out carefully because they, they're red hot. And then I put them in my straightening jig, and we just we just work it up and down the length of um, you know of our stick, and we get that bend out. And then when it cools down, it actually stays in that position. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so this is our steamer setup. All it is now the uh, vax home steam machine you can use a you can use a wallpaper stripper if you wanted to exactly the same thing and then it just through the pipe goes into the bottom of this tube okay all this is it's just a piece of old uh, flue pipe so it's old um, you know enamel lined flue pipe you could use whatever you wanted to be honest I mean I've used um, a piece of soil pipe before now and we just shove with sticks in there have it at a bit of an angle uh, don't have it don't have it straight up because all the steam will just come straight out. We want it to try and linger in, in there a bit. Old towel, shove the sticks in, towel over the end, jobs are good. 15 20 minutes and they're absolutely banging hot and we can steam and they'll they'll you know they'll get really flexible and we can get them uh, sticks nice and straight. Okay, so while we're waiting for that steamer to get going, you might be wondering how we actually straighten them. Now this is a straightening jig that I've made. It's just some pieces of, um, I think it's all, all worked up that, and, and they're all different diameters them. So as you can see, they get gradually bigger spaces, and then all we do, we find, once we've got our stick, we find the corresponding size, so that one's ideal there. It's too tight to go in there, so it'll fit in there nicely. Don't want it up there, because it, it's just not the right fit. Find it there, where our, where our bend is. And just apply a bit of pressure so once that's that's steamed we'll show you how to do that there's another thing as well that you can use bring you over here now this one it's one that I've made to put in the vise so as you can see you just open, the, open your vise up find the, the piece that we want to take the bend out of and then just pop it in the vise and then just tighten it up and it'll take that kink out of it. So while we're waiting for the uh, steamer to get up to temperature and get them sticks nice and warm, let's just uh, have a little natter about these hazel shanks. Now, if you're lucky enough to, to cut yourself a, a thumb stick straight away and it's fresh, you can actually bend that over your knee and you can get it pretty pretty straight and you can use it straight away if you want. I won't bother putting a tip on it because it'll obviously you know shrink. Um, the thing is if you're cutting sticks and you're gonna make a nice featured stick out of it, you know, one of these, you need to dry them. Okay, so they need to go in the rack. You can see I've got a load up there up on the uh, on the garage ceiling. Um, they need to dry and they need to be dried for probably about 12 months to be honest um, 
you could probably dry them a bit quicker uh, but I just tend to leave them and then once they dry I just straighten them out I mean you can tell I've got some fresh ones here I'll show you the, the difference in sound you can tell you can tell by the weight because that's a fresh one okay and the, the weight difference is, is staggering to be honest because that's just full of moisture so that's that kind of a, a dull a dull sound and that one it's quite a high pitched like a, a tinny sound if you will so that's how you can tell that they're nice and dry so it's pointless pointless working on a stick really uh, until it's properly dry so like I said you know a good nine months twelve months in the drying rack and then you're good to go right we've had a good 15-20 minutes in the steamer so let's have a look gloves remember some gloves get proper hot is that right keep that covered up so as you can see there you can see how how supple them sticks are you know we can uh, we can have a right good do at bending them now so we can see how how bent that one is so working from the end just find that corresponding groove and then we just apply a bit of pressure we'll go that, that next one up actually and then just hold it down and just keep sighting it down there you see we've got a right wobble on there just work your way up nice and easy not too much if it's a particularly bent piece bend it from there don't bend it from here because it'll start bending at the weakest point so a little bit of pressure Getting a bit warm now with that steamer on. So that's it. We've got our uh, we've got our stick straightened. So that's what we're going to work with. Like I said, about an inch inch in diameter. And what we're going to do, we're going to change that into something like that. So how do we do that? Well, a bit of graft, a bit of uh, bit of elbow grease. So we're gonna we're gonna start paring it down. What you can do, what I like to do, is using one of these. Use one of these little radius gauge. Okay. Now, 20 mil. 20 mil is about right. That's for the tops. Okay. That's the. Uh, Roughly about about the size. You can make them whatever size you want, but uh, I find that kind of works for me. So 20 mil, and I just kind of mark it on the top. So find find roughly where you want it to go. Yeah, mark your circle. Same on the other one. Easier said than done. Yeah, I'm shaping wood now, aren't I? Okay. So we've got our two circles there. That's what we're going to take it down to. The bottom bit, now we want that obviously to correspond with the stick. So we find out the diameter of the stick. We can use that again. Okay, so it's not perfectly round, but it doesn't matter that. So that's actually 28 mil. So we want that just a little bit bigger. So if we make that 30, so I'll find the 30 on there, and then all it does, it just gives us a guide, it's something to work to. So yeah, that's marked on there, and we know what we have to take off then. Now, a few ways we can do this. You can either I've got a big bandsaw there, and I'll probably take some of it down with the bandsaw, but 
you know if you've got minimal tools you can do it you can do it all with you know with a small uh, knife if you wanted to so it's just a case now of taking it down so you know using that bracing technique and just take it down and we're just going to keep working away at that and again the same with the top and we're going to remove all that bark all that bark's going to come off and then we're going to take it down to a rough rough shape just every time keep looking at it you know see which bits need to come off we obviously want more off that side because it's skewing off off that way and eventually we'll get down to we'll get down to that kind of uh, position this one's a little bit tight actually so we're going to open open that one up a little bit tight for the thumb in there so we're going to we're going to open that up with uh, with a file but you can see there we've got our two two markers so again this one we've got all the bark off we're just going to take it take it down to that diameter that we want so there you go we've taken that down roughly to the uh, the diameter of the tips and then we're just going to keep working down we're going to take some more off this off this inside and we're going to try and open this up a bit give your thumb a bit more room you don't want your thumb getting trapped inside it so we're going to keep working at that work away at it do the other side all this can be done with hand tools but power tools do make it uh, a lot easier it's a lot dustier and all that but uh, yeah, we'll take the majority of this off with the with the knife. There you go, get in there. Right, that's where we're up to. So we've done a bit of work with the uh, power file. Now, that's a power file, Black and Decker. Absolutely brilliant piece of kit. It's a little belt sander, basically, mains powered belt sander, different grits. Uh, I've got a couple of them. That one, I've had, oh bloody hell, I've had it nearly 30 years, I bet. Yeah, I have. I've had it 30 years, that. And um, it's still going. So, it's a bit of kit, but they make a lot of mess. So, get the old mask on. No excuses, because everyone's got one, haven't they? Right, get a mask on, you don't want to be breathing all this in. And all we're going to do, I mean, you can do this with a file, but say it's just easy, it shifts a lot of gear, and then I better turn it off, you can't hear me. So, we're just going to go in there, open that up a bit. You can see how, how you know useful that is for getting in there, uh, but you can do that with a round file if you wanted to. So, probably need another power file now, I've just probably broke that one. Um, yeah, round file. And it's just elbow grease. I mean, if you haven't got one of them, which not everyone has, let's have a look. We can actually use, um, you know, just just a piece of decorator's roll. Just get your finger in there. You know, fingers your right size. That's a, you know, that's where you want it for, isn't it? So, you know, different grits. That's sixty grit. You know, that's a that's a proper, you know, real good abrasive, and that'll shift loads of stuff. And it's just a just a case of keep working at it, you know, get a nice shape. That one's not quite right yet. We want to bring that in, you know, take a bit off the bottom. But yeah, we're getting there. That's that's all right. And we're going to shorten these tops as well. We're going to take that down a bit. They're a little bit long, them. So we're going to cut them off and keep working it. And uh, we'll show you how to fit that on top of the stick. Right, we've got our, our thumbstick V there, 
it's not perfectly finished yet, it doesn't have to be, but we've got the diameter at the bottom, we've, we've cut it down to you know what we think is going to be a decent size. Now what we need to do is attach it to the shank. Two ways we can do that, okay, originally, I still do sometimes depending on what I'm using, uh, you can use a bit of threaded bar, so that's a piece of 10mm threaded bar, effectively what we do, we drill down into the shank, okay, we bond that in with a two part epoxy resin, then we drill that out and then, that'll be down there a bit, we might put a spacer in there depending on, on uh, what design we're going for, and then we'll drill that out and then that'll just slot onto there and effectively that's it, that's glued in and that's good to go and that'll be strong, that'll be a really strong joint but what I prefer to do, um, what we do, we drill this out okay 19mm all in the bottom of there or again depending on the size of that it might be smaller it might be bigger um, and then what we do we make a spigot on the end of here and effectively that'll just slot into that okay and we'll we'll epoxy resin that in again maybe put a spacer on it and bond that in and then overnight that'll be dry and that'll be rock solid and that'll be a really strong joint so we'll show you how to do that Thirty mil there, another fifteen to go. And that's forty five millimeters. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to make the spigot on the end of the so We've got our, our depth of that, so that's 45mm roughly. Okay, we can uh, mark that on there. Little pencil mark. And what we're going to do, we're going to put a spacer on here. So we've got a piece of, I think we'll use a little piece of oak burr. <clears throat> so that's our, that's our little piece of burr that we're going to use. Make sure it fits. So yeah, that's big enough. And we're just going to add that, add that onto it. So we've got our pencil mark there. We've got our thickness, and we're just going to mark that off. So that's the distance that we need to take off. Now, what I like to do: piece of masking tape. Use low tack masking tape. If you use uh, stuff that grabs it'll take the bark off and I've uh, that's happened to me before that so find our mark that we want and oh we're just using this as a guide really keeping it nice and square and then that's our line that we're going to cut round and we're going to take that first that first bit of a cut we're going to uh, do that with the junior hacksaw I'll show you. So all we're going to do is just put a, a cut that's half the depth of the blade all the way around. Okay, so we've got our, our mark all the way around that we've cut with the, the junior hacksaw. We've got our mark on the end. All we're going to do now, we're just going to start Purring away, and we're going to reduce the diameter of this shank down to that mark. Okay, so just work it all the way around, just taking a little bit off at a time, not too much. Nice and easy. Just keep rotating it as you're working it. Yeah, when you get down to the uh, the mark, you can actually try it against the V, 
Okay, so we're just going to, there you go, that actually just sits on top there now. So we know that that, uh, that diameter is right. So we can leave that bit now. And then we need to reduce it at the shoulder. So all it's a case of doing, you've got to be quite careful in uh, this, this little uh, part of the job because you don't want to slip with that knife and end up, uh, you know, cutting yourself. So again, get that, that knife wants to be really, really sharp. Now, we've obviously got a little shoulder in there now. So all it's a case of doing is just nice and controlled. Keep that, that hand braced so that you're not slipping down. Okay, and then we're just going to push in there. And it's just that little click. And we're cutting against that little shoulder. So effectively the knife can't go any further. But you, you need to have that knife at about 45 degrees. Okay, too shallow and it's going to slip down. So just all the way around. You can just hear it hitting it there. Okay, and then as you can see there, we've got that cut all the way around and then we're just going to join them two up then. So we're going to end up taking, start at the shoulder and then just work your way up and take that sliver of bark off until we effectively connect the two diameters. You could actually do this with the uh, with the sander with the power file if you wanted to, but it just makes a lot of dust. So generally, if I am using the power file, I tend to work outside with it. It just gets the workshop full of dust. I haven't got any uh, mechanical extraction in here, unfortunately. So I try not to use it if I can. And it's nice to work with a knife as well. It gets uh, Nice bit of practice. So as you can see that diameter is reducing all the time there. And we can just keep trying it. Still still quite tight, nice tight fit that. We don't want to take too much off, we don't want it too slack a fit because we don't have to it is going to be bonded in with a two-part epoxy resin, but we don't want to rely on that. We want to use the strength of the wood. And I mean the more wood that we take off here, the weaker that joint. So we want to uh, we want to keep that joint as strong as we can. Just a uh, bit of a rasp file. We've taken the uh, the majority of it off with the knife, and we're just going to finish off with the file. Don't matter if it's rough because it's got something for the epoxy to uh, to key to. So let's have a look at that. Right, there you go. It's a nice fit that. Not too tight, not too slack, and that's the space that we've got left for our spacer that we're putting in. So you can, you know, that's that's hitting the end, and that's what we've got left there. So we're going to fit that. Uh, we're going to fit that onto the V. Now, what happens? You're going to fill that with epoxy resin, okay, and then that's going to go in. But because it's such a a good fit, you end up with like a, a piston effect, if you will. And there's nowhere for it to go on, so it gets gets trapped with air, and it, it doesn't go on all the way. And then you push it on, and then what happens? It starts creeping up and starts working its way off. So all we do, bit of a pencil mark, so down there like that. Yeah, effectively, all we all we're going to do is just make a, a a little slot in here, so it just releases the air. So just get your knife in there. And then just run it down. Gonna have to go in a couple of millimeters. Bit of a cut in the end. And then 45 degrees. 
and then we're just going to run down next to it and then all we're doing we're just taking that sliver of, of wood out there you go <clears throat> so effectively we've just got a like a little slot all the way down and that just helps the air release out and then it uh, it won't have that tendency to want to push the hand off okay so as you can see on this one that we've uh, done earlier we've put a spacer in here you can make spacers out of anything you know pieces of bone a uh, piece of cow horn buffalo horn there's one um, yeah that's a that's a nice piece of cow horn and you can buy all this stuff uh, online you can there's walking stick suppliers that's a piece of uh, black buffalo that's a nice piece of red red deer antler with uh, <coughs> black buffalo tips on it these are all you know the byproducts of the meat industry so they don't go to waste <coughs> that's your that's your piece of burr all right that's one that i cut off a, a dead fall tree and it's just dried out rock hard it's got beautiful grain on it so all we're going to do we're just going to put our just make sure it's big enough first to be honest see that one we might just we might just get that one yeah we've got it on there it's very very close that but we'll use that it's not a problem so all we're going to do just mark your put your pencil mark around it because we can actually um, we can still reduce the diameter of this a little bit when we come to sand it down so that's the uh, that's the spacer roughly find the center now what I like to do when I'm putting a spacer in I always like to make it a little bit bigger the hole so I think that was is it either 19 or 20 mil I think we're going to make that 22 mil because then we've got a little tiny bit of give all right we can um, we can still get plenty of epoxy in it but we're not tied to that exact that locate we can move the spacer left or right so when we come to glue it all up we've got a little bit of movement and we don't have to be so precise so <clears throat> we'll drill that out now drilling these with an auger always go through there we go until you've got to the, the hole in the other side then turn it over because they're quite brutal these auger bits and they will rip the wood so There you go, and we've got a nice, a nice clean hole there. What you can do, round file, you can just open that up a little bit, try it on. Uh, so there's our, there's our spigot. Yeah, it's a little bit tight, is that? So we haven't got much to play with there. So what we're going to do, we'll just open that up. We'll bob that in the vise. using a round file and we're just going to give it a give it a file all the way around and then there you go that's a lot better so we have that little bit we have a little bit of movement a little bit of adjustment if we need it I'm just going to try the. There. So once we've we've opened that up a little bit, made it a little bit of a larger diameter than that. Okay, so we've got a little bit of wiggle room. You can see. Okay, it's not a dead tight fit. Sometimes you might find that that shoulder. You put it on you can see a bit of a gap 
it's not too bad actually that but sometimes you might just have to dress that shoulder up a bit with your knife okay just so it's a nice square corner so once that's sat on and we're going to try our our V on now now sometimes they just work out absolutely perfect but other times we might need to do a little that's yeah see <clears throat> when you put it on you can see we turn it it's not too too bad isn't that I think it's not quite sitting down so we might just have to take a little bit off the end so we've just taken a, a little bit off the end there see if that makes any difference so that's sitting nicely that one's all right you tend to find a sweet spot so what I tend to do is I spin it round and then where I've when I get to the point where there's no gaps I'll just mark it so a bit of mark a bit of a mark on there a mark on there and then just put up so you know what's uh, what orientation it's supposed to be in then just holding that in position stick your, your thumb stick on the top your V now can you see that when I'm turning it because it isn't perfectly square you're actually getting a gap opening up now we'll get to a point where it is perfect all the way around now it's at that point now where you need to maintain that position so holding it there just line that up like we had it before there you go find the sweet spot and then mark it and that's the position that we're going to glue it all together in okay all them as long as them three marks are together we know that we've got no gaps all the way around okay for this next bit we're going to use a two-part epoxy so this is a 30 minute setting one, it's best not using one where it sets like immediately um, you know something they'll set in 30 seconds you need a little bit of time to to maneuver it so yeah 30 minute setting epoxy is fine okay that should be good to go there's our spacer so we've marked marked on the the up position and then all we're going to do is just get our epoxy liberally coated all the way around a little bit on the collar so don't forget our mark in the up position and we're just going to slide that on a bit of a wiggle okay now you can see there we've got a bit of a gap so we need to fill that up we don't want any voids at all we'll get some more epoxy on there fill that gap up because that's going to be a weak spot epoxy gives it a massive amount of strength so that all the way around and then once that's on we can glue the rest up some on the top don't forget to put some on the top and make sure that spigot is completely coated like I said that's where the strength is So looking at our marks, we're just going to bob that on there, just give it a bit of a wiggle when it's going on, and all the way down. Keep them marks in, you've got a bit of excess on there, wipe that off. Now 
And there we go, that's glued up. Now we need to clamp this in position. Now, this is a bit of an idea I've come up on my own. So once we've got that glued up, what I find sometimes, that can, that can end up moving. It can end up rising. And I like to keep some downward pressure on that. So, all I use, I've got a couple of, uh, are these two inch these? Two or three inch G clamps anyway, and that's just um, that's just a shoelace in between them. Now, the way this works, so there you go, we've got our, our G clamp, we just sit that on the middle, okay, we have them facing opposite ways, so the handle on this side this way, and the handle on that side that way. Two pieces of oak, or anything, it doesn't really matter to be honest, all it's doing is protecting the shank of the, uh, of the stick. From the pressure of the G clamp, and we're just going to—it's a little bit fiddly. Easier if you had six hands. If you're an octopus or something, but uh, yeah, just tighten that up just so that it's it's nipping on. Okay, that one's in position. And we have these G clamps pointing upwards. Okay, don't have them level and don't have them down because you've no adjustment. Then you'll see you'll see why in a minute. This one. A little bit further down, put a bit a little, little bit of pressure on it, clamp it on, not completely tight, and then because they're pointing upwards, when I bend this down, it's obviously putting pressure on this boot lace, which is forcing the V down onto the shank. So I can just pull that down. Tighten up the G clamp and then on this one as well I can just push that down and then tighten it up and you'll see them they are really tight then so with loads of pressure just check that you your marks are lined up and then we'll leave that now leave that for well I generally leave it overnight I don't mess around with it even though it says it's a 30 minute rapid setting uh, I always like to just leave it you know it doesn't do any harm you don't want to weaken that joint by um, by messing around with it too early so we leave that overnight and then we're ready for finishing off Okay, so this has been drying overnight, so 24 hours, should be rock hard, we'll take these off now, see how it's looking. Get rid of them, and that's what we're left with. So we've got that bit of masking tape on there, we'll leave that on, I'll tell you why in a minute. What we need to do now is dress these off so we can get these on the band saw and just just trim them you can do that with a hand saw with a you know a little fret saw or a coping saw and we just want to take all this excess off so what we're going to do we're going to end up filing these down um you know with a bit of sandpaper a file or whatever and uh, and dress the whole stick up So we've taken we've taken them down as much as we can with the uh, with the power file and the rasp and that. So we'll finish them off with a bit of sandpaper, get them nice and smooth. This this collar here, you know, I was saying about the um, 
the masking tape. We leave the masking tape on for a reason because what we don't want to do is taking any of the bark off. We want to try and keep the bark on. So when you when you're filing down, just as soon as the the masking tape starts to disappear, as soon as you start, you know, rubbing that off, that's when you need to stop. So it's just to you know be careful. Don't go too deep on there. It doesn't really matter about about that bit because it's it's bare wood anyway, and that's going to be sanded down. But we don't want to take any of the bark off. It just looks a nicer nicer job if you can if you can leave that on. So. There you go, you can see that's what I was talking about. We're just starting to remove the masking tape, so that's as far as we want to go now. Right, we've got that down now. So we've taken that down with the uh, with the power file and what we're going to do now, we're just going to get some sandpaper on that and we're just going to give that a nice smooth finish and then we're kind of ready for painting then and finishing off. There you go, we're getting there now. But um, this is quite a good product. It's called uh, Abranet, and it's uh, it's an abrasive abrasive paper. Well, it's not paper. It's uh, you know, that's the stuff. It's almost like a like an emery cloth with a like a I don't know, I don't know how you describe it really. But um, it's really hard wearing, and the thing is, it don't get clogged up. So, you know, you can actually, well you can see there, you can see through it, can't you? So it allows the dust to go through, so the, the you know, like normally sandpaper, it gets clogged up, doesn't it? But uh, this stuff, and it's really flexible as well, but fantastic for this. You know, you can see, it, uh, that's a 320 grit and it's, it's coming off for fun. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice product is that, and you can get it in all different, uh, different, you know, grades, that's... Uh, I think that's a 60 grit, um, 120, 180, 240, and that's a 320, so that's uh, that's really fine. That, that'll get it to a really nice smooth finish ready for painting. But yeah, I'll put a link in the uh, in the description, and uh, yeah, it's it's well worth buying his Abernet. It's uh, it's good stuff. Ready for painting now. So on to the next step. Right, there we have it, all sanded up, that's kind of ready uh, ready for painting now, finishing off. So all we do now is just give it a give it a wipe down with some white spirit, a bit of white spirit on a, on a cloth. You can see there you've got all this, the colour there, how that comes up already. Just cleans all the dust off. Right, we're going to get this stick painted up. So what we're going to use for this, we're going to use acrylic. So all we do, um, do a quick quick sketch on the uh, you know the, our outline and then we're just going to use artist acrylic paints and we'll uh, yeah we'll do a little design on here. So let's get on with that. So oh, there we go, we've got our little uh, little raw deer hind painted on there. I think what we'll do with this one, rather than do the kingfisher, we'll, we'll put a we'll put a little hoof print on the back. I think it's it's quite nice that when you when you've got a, a deer on there. So we'll we'll get that painted on now. There you 
There we go. All ready for varnishing. Right, we're just going to give this a um, bit of outdoor varnish satin. It'll just help to seal it and uh, you know so that when you are using it you know because you're holding it all the time there it'll stop that from from wearing off so this is where they they, they kind of come to life really so just give that a nice nice thin coat you see all them colors start to come out it gives it that bit of gloss and also it'll bring out the color in the uh, in the burr on the top if you look at that as you paint it See them natural golden colours coming out in that that bit of oak burr. So we'll just give that a nice nice coat down onto here as well on the spacer. And there we go. One rod here thumbstick. And that's how I that's how I make them. So I'm not going to make any any apologies. I know it's not a, a photography video, but um, you know, like I said, some days you just can't get out with a camera, and you know, them dark winter nights might be something that you fancy doing. But it's it's a cracking tool to take with you. Uh, like I said, you know, if you're crossing rivers, you know, you're checking how deep stuff is. Sometimes you just need a bit of support, don't you? You know, if you if you're up in the hills and uh, you know what have you, you 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 know, you're looking for kingfisher locations or you're looking for badger sets or fox earths and that and you're you know you're on hillsides and that a stick is a handy thing to have so have a go you don't need loads of stuff you know you don't need all the power tools you can do it all by hand but uh, you can keep it simple you can just you know go out outside find yourself a nice thumb stick you know finish it off get some varnish on it and happy days but that's how I do it I hope you've enjoyed it I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually I've decided when I reach 2,000 subscribers, which we're not, we're not a million miles off, I think we're on about 1,800, I'm going to give this stick away. Alright, so I'm going, to, um, I'm going to think up a little bit of a competition um, for people to do, but yeah, someone's going to get this stick, so I'll send it off to you, whoever it is, whoever wins the competition, but like I said, we've got to get to 2,000 subs yet, so another couple of hundred to go, but... Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, um, give us a thumbs up, share it, maybe give us, a, um, give us a sub if you haven't already subscribed and thanks very much, we'll see you out there.